Hello everyone, I am Robert Olguin and we are coming to you live today from in front of Sacred Heart Church here in El Paso Segundo Barrio, south of downtown. This historic church has become something of a visual representation of the humanitarian crisis that's been brought on by this latest surge of migrants at our border. In the past couple of weeks, we've seen thousands of people camped out on the streets here surrounding this church. And today, a drastic difference as we've seen in the last 24 hours, those numbers down right now to about uh, probably 30 or 40 men who are out here. Most people here, most of the migrants seeking refuge from the sun. Uh, so again, a much calmer, less active scene here in front of Sacred Heart Church. But this could be the calm before the storm as Title 42 is set to expire tonight at 10 o'clock local time. We begin today with a major development as the clock winds down on that border policy. Fox News and the Associated Press reporting that the Border Patrol has authorized the release of undocumented migrants in the U.S. without court dates if Border Patrol holding facilities become overcrowded. Migrants who are released in that situation, those are provisional releases, will be told to appear at an immigration office within 60 days or face deportation. Now, it's possible that this could lead to more people on the streets or finding their way to local shelters. We will continue to monitor that situation. As for Title 42 itself, listen, we've been reporting about this policy for several months now, but it does bear repeating that this is a health policy initiated by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So let's take a look now at what exactly Title 42 does. It was implemented in March of 2020 under the Trump administration as a way to limit the spread of COVID-19. Now, under the rule, the government had the authority to turn away migrants and asylum seekers at the border without due process, just essentially turn them back. Human rights organizations and immigration advocates argued that it violated U.S and international asylum laws and put vulnerable individuals at risk by making them remain in Mexico. So that is the primer on Title 42. That's what is at play right now, because again, that border policy comes to an end tonight. So right now we are going to go to a picture, a live look at the Lower Valley, where we have seen a migrant encampment there where uh, migrants are basically congregating in that area to surrender to Border Patrol. This is in the Lower Valley, not far from Loop 375 and Padres along the border wall there. We've seen this for the past week or so. And we're going to send things over now to KFOX 14 News at 5's Karin Sanchez to give us an update on the situation there. Karin. I'm here at Gate 42, just off of Loop 375, in a little bit north of Yarbrough. And as you can see here behind me, many Border Patrol agents are still remaining here. Many of their units are over there. As you can see, there are still some National Guard members. And as well, you know, just earlier here today, there was some Border Patrol officers right next to those units. And at around 3 p.m., one DHS bus and Border Patrol vans came here and started picking up dozens of migrants to take into processing. These buses and vans have been coming and going all morning. We saw several families walk through those gates and be loaded into the bus and vans. Several of them were small children. We were told by migrants at this encampment that families are prioritized. Earlier today, I also went to Sacred Heart Church where the streets are looking emptier than usual. One migrant I spoke with there tells me that he was here at gate 42 and was in one of those buses earlier today. They processed me there and well, I was there for three days and thank God they gave me a paper that allowed me to start my legal process like it should be. While many migrants have gotten picked up here at gate 42, hundreds of them are still waiting behind those gates for their turn to go through. Now, KFOX 14 News at 5's Jennifer Cuevas is live from downtown El Paso at one of Border Patrol's processing centers. Well, I'm here on the corner of Oregon and 9th Street, just outside of the CPP processing area south of downtown El Paso. Now, this is the area where our morning crew saw multiple buses, unmarked buses, come and drop migrants off for processing. However, I've been here for about two hours this afternoon, and I have yet to see one bus come to drop migrants off here to this area. Just take a look at what it looks like. It's pretty quiet right now. Uh, it's just a drive 
in a parking lot really but earlier this week and again today we saw buses coming into this parking lot and dropping off migrants to be processed now this area is just about six miles away from where migrants are being picked up at the border wall but it is possible that they are being taken to the other CBP processing facilities there is one off of US 54 as well as one in northeast El Paso now, Border Patrol has previously stated it varies case by case in terms of what happens to the migrants once they are processed. KFOX 14 has been working to find out exactly how many migrants have been sent to other U.S. cities this week by U.S. Customs and Border Protection, as well as how many migrants are currently inside CBP detention centers. Now, according to Immigration and Customs Enforcement, one flight with migrants left for Guatemala earlier this morning. Now, we have reached out to Congresswoman Veronica Esco bar as well as some local leaders such as El Paso County Judge Ricardo Samaniego and El Paso Mayor Oscar Leeser as well as the Border Network for Human Rights to try to get more information about what is happening next to these migrants where they are being taken. We are still waiting back to hear on those responses but we will of course continue to bring you the latest on air and online. I'm reporting live in South El Paso. Jennifer Cuevas, KFOX 14 News at 5. Karin, thank you. Now, today, a third flight full of migrants left from El Paso International. The repatriation flight was taking people back to Guatemala. This is video from one of two flights that departed yesterday, one to Guatemala, the other to Honduras. Immigration and Customs Enforcement asked us not to show the video of today's flight until after it lands in Guatemala at 11.15 tonight. Now, a national civil rights organization is calling on the Biden administration to do more to help migrants arriving at the border. The League of United Latin American Citizens held a news conference out here today at Sacred Heart Church. The LULAC national president, Domingo Garcia, says that President Biden and Congress need to come up with a plan to help migrants who are showing up at the border. There should be big tent cities where these immigrants can go and get the assistance and the help. And if we're hearing these numbers of 10 to 15,000 a day, there's no capacity. And the city and the county needs that capacity. That means money, volunteers. During today's news conference, advocates were seen carrying posters with the words justice and dignity for all immigrants. So back out here live, we know that public, or rather we know that Title 42 is a public health order. It was never intended to be used as immigration policy, but that's exactly what's happened over the past three years. So now that it expires, the question is, what happens next? What happens for the asylum seekers who are arriving at the border? And what happens with the border patrol in terms of enforcement efforts? Plus, what happens when the White House makes controversial changes to asylum policy? Over the past several weeks, these images out of El Paso have been seen around the world, cited as an example of an immigration system in chaos. Migrants trying urgently to enter the U.S. before the end of Title 42 for fear that more restrictive policies are coming. And for the most part, they're right. Title 42 going away just means that we go back to Title 8. Anthony Scott Good is the new Border Patrol Sector Chief in El Paso. Over the past three years, border officials have deported or denied entry to would-be migrants more than three million times. But under Title 42, migrants were simply returned to Mexico. Now, entering the country illegally will come with consequences. Uh, something that people need to be aware of is if, if they want to cross illegally in between the ports of entry, that those also come with consequences and with penalties, right? Um, not only are you expeditiously, expeditiously removed from the country and to your country of origin or to Mexico, uh, also you have a five-year ban uh, to be able to re-enter through the legal way, through the port of entry. All the while, the White House this week announced major changes to the asylum system. Starting tomorrow, the Biden administration will deny asylum to migrants who show up at the border without first applying online or seeking protection in a country they passed through. It's very similar to a Trump era policy in 2019 that was eventually blocked in federal court. And migrant advocates say President Biden is breaking a campaign promise to restore the asylum system. 
this absurd requirement is going to virtually shut the door on all non-Mexicans. The countries that people pass through on their way to the U.S. are extremely dangerous for migrants, and virtually none of them have functioning asylum systems with the capacity to take in all those that the U.S. turns away. But President Biden's supporters point to other changes, including the creation of regional hubs in other countries where migrants can apply to enter the U.S., Canada, or Spain. The White House right now is working within the, the confines of the resources that Congress has provided and within the laws that were created by Congress decades ago. El Paso Congresswoman Veronica Escobar says Biden is doing what he can to deal with extraordinary challenges. But doing nothing is not an answer. And so it's a, you know, it's a very difficult position, again, that, that the administration is, is working within, you know, the confines of the current law, the kind, confines of current appropriations. It's true that Congress has not passed comprehensive immigration reform since 1986, but migration has changed considerably over the last 30 years. What were once single job seekers from Mexico are now often families from all over Latin America seeking humanitarian protection. Yo me a migración. We spoke to two migrants from Venezuela this week who recently turned themselves into Border Patrol for processing. Luis Padron tells us he's been given a notice to appear in immigration court in 2027, four years from now. And that's pretty typical for migrants who make an asylum claim, who are then allowed to live and work in the U.S. until their asylum claim is resolved. According to researchers at Syracuse University, there are two million pending cases in our immigration court system. Look, folks, when they come over, they should get their, their day in court in days, not years. And if you qualify for asylum, fantastic. Those are our laws. If you do not qualify for asylum, you should be sent back to your country of origin. What is also happening, you're seeing the Biden administration funnel people down the asylum route. Right now, nine out of 10 people do not qualify for asylum. So stop funneling them down that route. Now, Congressman Gonzalez, they're talking about repatriation flights for people who do not qualify for asylum. It's important to note, however, that many of the migrants arriving at the border are from countries from which the United States does not have diplomatic relations. For example, we cannot repatriate people back to Venezuela because of the government there and the United States not having diplomatic relations. So it complicates matters, certainly. Also, you heard the Border Patrol there talking about Title VIII going back to Title VIII and the removal process. Well, today we had the chance to chat with Chad Wolf. He is the former acting Department of Homeland Safety Secretary. So he was the acting secretary in the Trump administration until recently, right? And he says that Title VIII doesn't really change anything because he says the asylum process is a way to game the system. Well, it is a Band-Aid. It's a status quo, right? DHS has used Title VIII for the last 20 years. So it's nothing new about it. We know exactly what that process is. The problem is the cartels know exactly what that process is. And so this administration will say, hey, we're going to put them in Title VIII. We're going to put them in expedited removal. And that sounds great. Except all the alien, illegal alien has to do is say, I'm, I'm claiming asylum. They get removed from that process. They go into immigration court proceedings, which take years and years and years. We're back to the status quo. We're back to catch and release. We're back to a system that doesn't work. Now, when it comes to the chances of being granted asylum, the interesting thing when you take note of the research that's been done by Syracuse University is that it actually depends on where you claim asylum, what court you end up in. And uh, for example, you have a much better chance of being granted asylum, say in California, if you end up at an immigration court there than you would in Texas or Louisiana. So it's not a set percentage. It can vary from state to state.
even though it is a federal law. Now, before we leave downtown today, we have met many people who have helped the migrants provide them shelter. And we have spent time at the Opportunity Center, not far from here. That is, again, one of the nonprofits that's able to help undocumented migrants, migrants who haven't been processed. Because remember, the city and the county can't help migrants who have been undocumented because then that risks their federal funding. So I spoke to John Martin about what will happen now that Title 42 is being lifted. And that's an unfair question because, of course, none of us have a crystal ball. But this is what he had to say. We need to see what's thrown at us. So just think of the analogy of a baseball pitch. OK, you don't know what's coming. Is it going to come at you as a fastball? Is it going to be a curveball? Or is it just going to sneak in on you a little bit at that time? We do know there's going to be large numbers. But I will repeat a statement that I've made several times at this point. OK, the reality is, and we need to understand this, no matter how prepared we are, we will not be prepared. But the other thing that I stress and almost every time I do an interview, I need people to understand that this is a national issue. And I'm not talking about politics here. We've done everything to avoid that discussion. We here in El Paso, as a border community, like so many other communities from Texas to California, we just happen to be at the front doorstep. And to be able to resolve this issue, we that call this nation home need to work together. So back out here live, indeed, El Paso is at the front doorstep when it comes to immigration and immigration related issues. And of course, all eyes are on the border right now as Title 42 set to expire again tonight at 10 o'clock local time. And as for the scene here in front of Sacred Heart Church, it is a rather calm scene. A stark difference from even just 72 hours ago. So that is the latest from here south of downtown Selena. To continue our coverage, we send it back to you in the studio.